Hello and welcome back, and that is right, today we want to return to the subject of the Terramaster F8 SSD and F8 SSD Plus. And we've already done a review, we've done some comparisons and testing, but this video we're going to cut straight to the quick. Today I'm going to give you five reasons why the F8 SSD and F8 SSD Plus may well be the best NAS server for you, but I'm also going to give you five reasons why you might want to stay on the fence a wee bit longer. So without further ado, let's crack on with number one. Let's face it, it's the one that to me stands out the most. This tiny little NAS server, this tiny little 24 7 server, can hold eight. M.2 NVMEs inside. Now, M.2 NVMEs, one of their largest downfalls, other than perhaps the price, is capacity. You can never really go higher than 4 TB, and although there are some 8 TBs out there, either at extortionate prices or using QLC NAND, they're not really that desirable. Ultimately, at a 4 TB commercial, kind of agreed maximum capacity, generally, Dedicated flash servers, servers don't have enough bays in order to really capture the capacity mark. This, on the other hand, with eight of them means you can really push the boundary. But on top of that, you can get hold of smaller capacities like one and two TB drives and therefore be able to leverage their more affordable price per terabyte point against a larger RAID array. And given that the system is this small, I'm kind of impressed just how much storage they've managed to cram in to this little i3 powered system. And talking of cramming in all of that storage, it would be very easy to assume, as I did, that one, this system is either going to be stupidly noisy because of fan distribution, or that the SSDs in the system as a whole is going to get boiling hot. And the reality is, it doesn't. The bottom of the system has a couple of active cooling fans that draw air all the way through the system out the fan compartment there at the top and it drives through a bunch of strategically placed heat sinks both on top of the main CPU that N305 inside and across all of the SSD slots inside. Every single one of those SSD bays arrives with a large thick heat dissipation heat sink included with the accessory kit there. Add to that that the, each of those M2 NVMe slots are Gen 3 times 1 speed, something that I would normally criticize the systems for quite a lot but I'm not going to be as critical here all adds up to a system that has SSDs that never really get the opportunity to go too heavy in terms of temperature generation but also a surrounding system that leverages a lot of active cooling alongside heat dissipation internally to work with it and overall a small compact chassis to play with. This next point I know may be debated in the comments with me here, but I will say that the F8 SSD and F8 SSD Plus arrive at, I would argue, quite an impressive price point for a turnkey now solution. Let me explain. The F8 SSD arrives with the N95 quad-core CPU, and the F8 SSD Plus arrives with an 8-core i3 CPU inside. Now, if you were to try to build this solution from scratch, and I mean to try to emulate what we got here, you would have to try to build from scratch in DIY or build your own a small compact server that I swear is only slightly smaller than my hand um, with eight M.2 NVMe slots inside. It would have to arrive with the memory on board. It would have to arrive with the N95 or N305 CPU. It would have to arrive with 10 GPE on the rear. It would have to arrive with all of that and a turnkey NAS operating system included and the mobile apps and all the rest of it. Now, the closest I have found to try to build this is to use something like this, the MW N100 NAS motherboard. We did a video on the channel, it arrived at 2.5 gig and 10 gig there on board. It's available in the M100 version with uh, an 8 gig, SS, uh, 8 gig of memory and a 128 gig SSD module for just shy of $200. You can get the N305 version, that adds about $100 on top, but you're looking at two to $300 for that motherboard. That motherboard is already bigger than this in terms of just general glance. Obviously, it's thinner on the side. But once you factor in the PSU, once you factor in all of the extra bells and whistles of the casing, once you factor in the ability to add M2 NVMEs, because remember, this board has only got two NVMEs, you're going to need to use a PCIe slot to add even further PCIe um, uh, equipped M.2 NVMEs on here. Trying to achieve all of that at a cost of around 500 nicker for this, is going to become very difficult and then you've got to start putting a price tag on time is money and then you've got to factor in to the software as well that's what i mean 
it is very difficult to beat this in terms of price point. T-Raid. This system arrives with TerraMaster's own flexible RAID system, not just their hard drive equipped systems, but even this NVMe one here. T-Raid allows you to, rather than use traditional RAID configurations, which will limit you to the uh, same hard drive or SSD in a given array, so you can't make them bigger or smaller without either losing storage or penalizing all of the other drives, T-Raid's flexible system allows you to mix and match drives. Now, you're not going to do that on day one. That'd be madness. But this has got eight M.2 NVMe slots. What if you went ahead and installed two or four SSDs inside four of the available slots inside there? and they're all the same capacity. Then, a few years down the line, as your available storage gets smaller and the price per terabyte of SSDs gets cheaper, maybe you wanna go for bigger drives. A flexible RAID storage system will allow you to take advantage of larger storage drives and absorb the extra storage capability, whereas traditional RAID configurations will not allow you to do that. That's why T-RAID is such a big deal, and more importantly, there are only one of about two to three brands actually include this, Synology probably being one of the biggest ones with their hybrid RAID system. Nevertheless, having that in an SSD system where capacities and price per terabyte is so volatile, that's impressive. Next up, the TOS software. We've got to talk about it. The TOS or TerraMaster Operating System NAS software in version 6 is still very, very well equipped. It's one of the youngest NAS softwares on the market when you compare against the other turnkey NAS solutions like DSM and QTS, but it arrives with pretty much everything. It's arriving um, with a secure uh, isolation mode there for disabling all third-party PHP and remote access, as well as having numerous security scanning systems internally and full IP block and internal security control, removal of the admin account there, then we can move on to the apps and services, AI photo recognition, a full um, backup management tool that allows you to manage cloud, USB, local, folder to folder, and NAS to NAS backups, support of write once read many, support of snapshots, support of BTRFS, support of iSCSI LUNs and targets, support of virtual machine deployment, an early beta surveillance application, deduplication is rolled into this. It's just the works are all built in. But moreover from that, if you don't want to use their software, which is fine, you can install TrueNAS, you can install Unraid, and they won't invalidate your hardware warranty. You can still use the three years hardware warranty, but use third party NAS operating systems on this if you choose to. It's a win-win, but it ain't all good news. Let's talk about the things about this device that may put you off or make you remain on the fence a little bit longer. I may have heaped praise on that N305 i3 CPU inside here, but we've got to be realistic. There are better CPUs currently available in the market for similar solutions to this. Probably the one of the most outstanding is the Intel i5-1235U, a CPU we've seen used a lot in 2024 in different NAS systems. Now it has a higher TDP, which is effectively the amount of power that CPU is going to use and its higher capability. However, the N305, all of its power efficiency only has nine lanes to play with, which even when you distribute it ac across the 10 GBE and the 8 M.2 NVMEs inside here at three times one, just really is not much left over at the end or even to spread across those available systems. Now this is the SSD plus model. There is the standard F8 model. They use the same you know, similar architecture, but one's got a quad core uh, all the late and the other one has got an eight core. There should have been a better CPU inside this. I really, really hope that TerraMaster are working on a max version of this in the same way they worked on their F4 series to arrive in a standard class, a pro class, and a max class, because this needs a beefier CPU. It would open the door to faster generation lanes, so Gen 4 times 1 perhaps. It would open the door to more lanes to add more um, ports and connections there. Ultimately, the CPU inside this is good, but keep in mind, it is a very mid-tier efficient CPU. Oh, come on, come on. That's just the way it is. This point may seem a little churlish, but I know it has bugged some people when this unit was first announced, and that is the lack of ECC memory on this. This is a flash optimized SSD focused system here, and it doesn't have ECC memory. It only has 16 gig of memory in the Pro model and eight gig in the standard class model with 32 gig maximum, which is okay. 
But still, the lack of ECC memory is definitely, definitely, definitely going to annoy some users. I know there's going to be some of you highlighting that it's got on-die ECC built into DDR5, but it's just not the same. It's about uh, transitional and destinational data there in terms of where the write is happening, where the error can be found. And a lot of users, particularly industry vets, prioritize ECC memory, particularly in flash systems. At this price point, and with that CPU architecture, there was no way this was ever going to have ECC. But nevertheless, we have to put that out there because there's some of you that need to know this before they start putting money on the table. And again, this harks back to the CPU, it harks back to the price point, and it harks back to the hardware architecture getting spread so thin. Well, that's got 10 GPE. It's only got the one port there. Now, on the, on the face of it, you're thinking, well, one port sounds like enough, a 1,000 megs. I've only got one port on my PC. I get it. It's not going to be a problem for everyone. But once you've got eight SSDs in there, once you raid them together, the potential is in the thousands of megabytes there, and you're only ever going to be able to have a 1,000 megs on the outside there. Now, again, there are some brands out there, we're not going to say their name, but we know who we're thinking of, who don't really step outside of the one, gig, uh, the one gigabit network performance speed there so having 10g, 10g is good but nevertheless there's going to be some users that don't realize that that 10gbe as good as it sounds is actually something of a bottleneck in a system like this we sort of touched on this earlier on but the ssd bays inside this system are gen 3 times 1 gen 3 ssd speeds are around 800 to 1000 megabytes per second normally ssds that you're going to put inside this much like the one that i keep waving here at the camera is a gen 3 times 4 it can achieve three three and a bit thousand megabytes per second however you're going to be limited on every single one of those slots to 800 to 1000 megs now yes that's going to lower temperature and power consumption there so again, much like we mentioned my point earlier on, that can be beneficial. There's no avoiding that, again, you're going to be throttled down on every single SSD you put inside this system. It is a price you pay for such a modest CPU there, ow. But we have to at least acknowledge that putting super fast SSDs inside this and raiding them together, even on the internal performance that we measured in our reviews, is still not going to be fully realized because of the lane restrictions enforced by that more affordable and more efficient CPU being brought to bear here. And of course, Deadbolt. We're going to talk about it. I will always mention Deadbolt in TerraMaster content, just like I do with Acer Store and QNAP, at least for a few more years. Back a few years ago, they were a uh, TerraMaster, one of the few brands that were impacted and targeted by the Deadbolt ransomware group. And quite a lot of users had their systems encrypted and either had to uh, pursue data recovery services, paid or timely free services, or had to pay a ransom in Bitcoin there. Again, TerraMaster have done a lot since then. They've tightened up a lot of their system protocols, tightened up a lot of the system defaults, installed all manner of security stuff internally as well as you know, kind of restricted a lot of things from users to do without them at the very least understanding the dangers that they may be putting their system in. However, we have to acknowledge that they were impacted by it and some of that, just like Asus Store and QNAP, they were impacted because of not just some users leaving their systems in unsafe states, but the way TerraMaster handled it internally and some of the applications and services that were allowed or at least bypassed by that measure of deadbolt impact. So again, they are not targeted by it now. They have been a squeaky clean company in terms of ransomware attacks for a few years now, but we do still have to raise it because the last thing we need to do is go ahead and buy a solution like this and then down the line find out that there actually was quite a big security incident with this and other brands down the road. And there you go. That's the should you buy for the TerraMaster F8 SSD and F8 SSD Plus. What do you guys think? There's a full review and all the other articles and videos that we've done on Plex and performance and more linked in the description along with the written reviews as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you've got one of these. Maybe you're steering clear for one reason or another that wasn't included in this video. And if you are considering getting hold of this, and you are considering buying from one of the retailers linked in the description below, please use those links to do it. Make sure those two things are true, but use those links. It results in a small commission fee making its way to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares. It's just us, and it allows us to keep doing what we do. I'll stop hitting that box there. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic week.